indexicality and sense of script. Now we move on and talk about the indexicality of code switching. Now what does indexicality actually mean? You must have come across books that have this index at the end of them and with the help of this index you can find the uh, pages on which the topics that you are interested in have been discussed. Similarly, indexicality in linguistics actually means what something indicates or what something refers to. To give you an example, I in a language would mean it refers to self and now refers to time. Now coming back to indexicality in linguistic code uh, choices. It is argued that linguistic code choices, whether you choose to speak in English or Urdu or you do a code switching, it actually refers to rights and obligations between the participants. That is what is expected to be um, to be done, what is the power balance between the um, uh, participants, Th that is what it indexes or this is where the code switching comes in in terms of its indexicality. To give you a very brief example, for instance, if you use English in Pakistan, it seems uh, as if um, because it is official language and even if you are using the language to your friend, you sort of change the power balance a little bit in which you are telling the other person to do something. So indexicality would mean that different languages, different varieties, styles, um, accents have indexical qualities. All of them have one or the other indexical quality. That is, it refers to something. It symbolizes something. And the interesting thing is that a speech community has a tacit understanding, has an implied understanding of this knowledge of indexicality. So they understand what this means. So when you are using Urdu instead of Punjabi or you're using a regional language or you are code switching, so immediately the, within a given speech community, people understand your meaning in terms of the interpersonal relationships. Now there is nothing within languages themselves that gives them that kind of indexicality. However, it is because of certain ideologies, it is because of some uh, socio-political uh, context, it is because of some socio-cultural context that gives rise to what we call intersubjective understandings. Intersubjective understandings would mean that we understand the basic assumptions behind some uh, behind a phrase behind something and it is because of this an intersubjective understanding of this indexicality that what it um, that we are able to uh, interpret what other person means so indexicality would mean that speakers have a mental representation of language choices and, re and relational power. Now the speakers know what the, the language choices they are making, what does it mean or what does it refer to and they specifically make those choices while the people they are speaking to understand those choices and they understand the power balance that is at work over there. So, within a given community, people would know 
which language choice is a marked choice and which language choice is an unmarked choice or which language choice is more marked than the other choices. Now, I am constantly using these two uh, binary terms, marked and unmarked. Marked would mean a language choice that is unusually used in a given um, a, so, a speech event. And an unmarked choice would be when specific norms of a language or uh, use in a given event have been followed. So immediately within um, a conversation, people can pick up what is unusual and what is not actually um, the right use of language in a given speech uh, community. So theoretically, it is applicable. This rule is applicable across you know, uh, the world, universally applicable in um, exchanges, linguistic exchanges, or what we call conventionalized exchanges. Conventionalized exchanges are exchanges which are routine exchanges and more or less they have the same beginnings and openings and they almost have a kind of a sense of script. People know what to do or what to say. Like when you enter the house, you know you have to say salam. When you um, see a doctor, there are specific things that are said in between. We, in a school environment, there are again conventionalized exchanges between teachers and teachers, teachers and students. All those are called conventionalized speeches. Now we have said that this theory that we are talking about is applicable universally. But which languages index what things or what roles, that would be specific to different speech communities.